Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Welcome to the Avexia webinar series. Our topic for tonight is Methods and Clinical Benefits of NAD Optimization, a Clinician's Perspective. My name is Joanne Iverson. I am the Director of Client Relations for Avexia Diagnostics and will be your host for this evening. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of being joined by our guest, Dr. Richard M. Delaney, who will be our presenter for this webinar. Dr. Delaney is a multiple board certified internal medicine, cardiology, geriatrics, and critical care integrative medical physician who specializes in anti-aging and functional medicine. He earned his medical doctorate degree from Georgetown University and then went on to learn and study at such prestigious institutions as George Washington University Medical Center in Washington, D.C., London's St. George Hospital, and Paracelsus Clinic in Switzerland. He has been in private practice in Milton, Massachusetts for over 40 years with a focus on cardiology, internal medicine, and preventive medicine. He currently incorporates the best of both traditional and alternative medicine in his treatment plans, looking at all aspects of a patient's life before developing a comprehensive, individualized, preventive and therapeutic program. Joining Dr. Delaney tonight will be Professor Jin Sheng Shi, PhD, founder and CEO of Jinfinity Precision Medicine. In addition to these fine gentlemen, we also have Dr. Wayne Sedano, our Director of Clinical Support and Education at Avexia Diagnostics this evening. Before we begin, just a bit of housekeeping. We encourage participation. So if you have a question, you may submit your question in the questions field in the right hand area of the interface. We will answer the submitted questions towards the end of the presentation. If your questions are not answered this evening, you will surely receive an answer by email within a day or two. Without further delay, I will now turn the webinar over to Dr. Delaney. Um, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to be able to discuss with you something that I find very exciting. And that is, what is NAD? NAD, nicotinamide adding dinucleotide. It's a coenzyme that um, that's essential to, for, to life and found in every cell of all living things. Catalyzed reactions for more than 500 enzymes, including sirtuins, PARPs, and CD38. These are other enzymes that are relevant. There we go. It's an amazing molecule that we make within our own bodies. NAD is found in all living cells. It's essential for healthy metabolism and energy production of our, the human body. It serves an important role in maintaining the integrity of our DNA. Electrons from one form of NAD, that's NAD, oxidized NAD, to another form reduce NADH, help convert the nutrients in the food we eat into ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Together, these two forms of NAD work synergistically with PARPs and sirtuins to promote good health within our complex human bodies. ATP is the key form of energy that all the cells of the body can use. It has to be made constantly all the time, and the human body accomplishes this monumental task throughout our lives. Knowledge about how it works has been known for a long time. NAD plus, nicotinamide adenone dinucleotide, is simply the key molecule that has to be present in the right amount at the right time in the mitochondria of our cells in our bodies where ATP is made. Why we need to boost our body's ability to make and maintain adequate levels of NAD. The reason is over time it declines in all of us. By the time we're born when it's quite high by the time we get to be age 60, 70 and higher it's very low. By boosting NAD within our bodies, we can now hopefully extend both our lifespan and more importantly, our health span. That means that we expect not only to live longer, but to be in much better health as we become older. By taking a specific supplement, quercetin, in a timely fashion, we block a harmful enzyme system, CD38, that chews up much of our NAD. And that way we can successfully promote higher levels in our body. 
What are the benefits of optimal NAD? Increased energy. Well, by increasing our, our, our ATP, by definition, we get energy. But better sleep, improve performance, reduce muscle and joint pains, enhance immunity against infections, reduce inflammation, reduce insulin resistance, better mental clarity, improve liver function. How can it do all these things? What I've found in my years use of this product with my patients, patients get their energy back first. And then something else happens. If they have sore muscles, they get better. If someone has heart disease, that gets a little better. So it's almost like the body, once you restore a level of NAD that provides energy, then the body decides what to fix in the individual person. Because we're all different, we have different reasons to have to be sick. There are four ways to elevate NAD. We can't really give NAD itself, we have to give a precursor. And there are four precursors. NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, that's the compound that's in the powder that I use to give my patients to boost their NAD levels. Nicotine ribinocyte is another product in the market that goes into a powder or a pill that helps boost the production of NAD. And nicotinamide is also possibly another element, and it's in this slide here. You can see NA, nicotinamide slides down to NMN and into NAD+, and nicotinic acid itself, niacin. On a practical basis, though, it's really only the NAD precursors, NMR and NR, that work the best to boost NAD levels. We also want to block, at times, the, the NADase. That's the enzyme that that chews up the NAD, and that's quercetin or a compound called apigen. NAD uh, infusion, we won't talk about, but it does not increase the levels of intracellular NAD. What are the best ways to optimize NAD? The best way is to take an NMN booster, and the best one, I think, is this Acuri Vitality Boost. On the left side, you can see low levels of NAD, and at two weeks and four weeks after taking it, the levels of NAD within the patient's body, measured by in the patient's blood, shows benefit. And it results in clinical benefit, validated in clinical studies in, 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 the, in the literature, but also by myself seeing my patients. It optimizes NAD production in 90% of my patients. And much, much of them, you can see the clinical difference. It's a dramatic change in the ability to treat people. How do I know which booster is right? Well, studies have shown that NMR, NMN, and NR can both boost NAD levels. I find that NMN is better than NR. If you read the literature, it would suggest that, and, but there are many NMM products on the market. I find that this patent pending one used by the Acuri Vitality Booster is the best one. And I base that on my assessment of the dosage in it, the, the other compounds within it, and how my patients have clinically responded after its consumption. The unique ability to test the intracellular NAD levels before and after the use of the supplement is outstanding. It allows me to know if the person isn't getting better, is it because they're not consuming enough? Am I doing something wrong? Or they just don't want it? And so I just find it's a fascinating ability to be able to measure before and after the use of the product. How do I know which booster is best for, right for me? Patients. Well, in many of my patients, I've seen improvement in both energy and sleep that typically occurs to three to four in within the first three to four weeks. And that's very common. They have more energy and they begin sleeping better. I'm able to validate that clinical response when I repeat the NAD level and I see the level has gone up. I've also seen patients who, when they start out and they have very low NAD levels, they often develop a more rapid clinical improvement. And to, um, at the end of this conference today, I'm gonna to present a patient who sent me a text this morning who started the NAD today, and you're gonna be able to see the benefit. Patients really enjoy seeing the achievement of NAD levels. When they rise to the optimal healthy range currently seen in teenagers, the individuals in their early 20s, we have the illusion that we're getting younger. We're certainly getting healthier. This slide shows um, the pre and post NAD levels in 22 of my patients, the first five or six months of using this, patient, of using this uh, product. 
And you can see most of them go up. 80% of the patients have their NAD optimized with significant clinical improvement. And the range is 45 to 94. Some people, very young age, have very low NAD levels. And of course, my, my, question, my responsibility is to find out not only why, but also to help get it back up to normal. Are there any downsides to taking the NAD booster? The risk of cancer is sometimes talked about, and let me deal with this and explain. NAD plays important roles in immunity, including anti-tumor immunity and the repair of damage in NAD, uh, DNA, and both are beneficial to be able to prevent cancer. However, many of the cancer cells do in increase the expression of NAMPs. That's that rate-limiting enzyme that took NMN and, and, and that nicotinamide down to NMN, suggesting that cancers, especially those of the prostate and pancreas, might hijack the path, pathway to promote cancer cell growth. There's little evidence that that really happens, but because of the possibility that the, as the NAD boosts energy in the body, the body steals that energy to make cancer cells grow, it is of concern. So the way I handle this still to be developed process is that I screen all my patients with four, different, four tests the screening test for uh, looking for early biologic mar markers of cancer, PSA for, for possible, possible prostate cancer, CEA for intestinal cancer, CA125 for possible ovarian cancer, and C199 for possible pancreatic cancer. Now, if these numbers are elevated, it does not mean the patient has cancer, but they could. So before I let them go on a booster, I make sure I, as their doctor, and if I talk to anybody, any other doctor who uses this, they should make sure those patients should be screened for those cancers. Also, I make sure all my patients, before they go on the booster, have had the individual cancer screening tests that we all provide, colonoscopies, mammograms, stool tests, pap smears, physical examinations are performed. This span, lifespan of metabolism, this is one of the most important slides I just want to go over because it's really life-changing for me to understand aging. This was published in August of 2021 in the Science Magazine. It has reassessed to assess the metabolic rate and the total energy expenditure in people over their lifetime. And if you can see in this graphic, on the far left is a little girl and then a young adult and then the mother and an older father and a grandfather. And you can see that the, the yellow one, uh, slide, the yellow line addresses metabolic rate and adjusted energy expenditure. The blue rate relates the, uh, the adiposity, the fatness, that we the obesity that we develop. And the bottom red line shows when chronic disease occurs. And as you can see, that the highest metabolic rate, the greatest rate of total energy expenditure is when someone is nine to 15 months old. And then from then it's a slow decline to age 20. And then that's through teenage years, it goes down. And then from 20 to 60, it stays the same and then it declines. This area between 20 and 60 is where we develop disease. Some people get diabetes, some people have high blood pressure, some people have intestinal disorders, some people get psoriasis. The illness stays within here and our bodies use our energy to try to handle it. Eventually though, the implication is at age 60, they can't do any more and it starts to slide. And just as that slides, chronic disease goes up. So when the NAD levels that come down on us all are coming down during this flat phase, hidden from view. And our goal I think is to find out what illnesses what diseases are occurring here that we can intervene with so that at age 60, we have the energy to be healthier longer. And that's, that scan, I just want to go through the, the, the different uh, inflection points. Phase one was the markedly increased energy expenditure peaking during infancy between nine and 15 months. So the highest metabolic rate is when we're a child. Then declines, from infancy to adolescence at age 20. And there's a plateau phase lasting through adulthood from 20 to 60 years old. And phase four is the key late declining phase. Physicians who take care of adults 
the plateau phase is where all the disease is happening, hidden from view. There are different aspects in the body is using up our energy. And NAD is one of the, and one of the NAD decline is one of the ones hidden from view that we're talking about. I believe the marked rise in the incidence of chronic disease from late middle age aligns exactly with the shift of energy expenditure that occurs at that same time, 60. We lose adiposity, and this suggests that metabolism and the loss of energy expenditure is a driver in the biology of aging. I believe most individuals develop their unique causes of energy insufficiency hidden from view. And during all that time, from 20 to 60, the body is fighting to help keep us straight, but eventually fails as we get older. If we can understand that, understand what within those timelines are causing us to lose the energy efficiency and don't be, and cannot fight back, to keep the diseases at bay. That's the, that's the goal of the future. So the goal, ideal goal down here would be to intervene early to successfully restore energy insufficiency achieved by focusing on treatment options, addressing the causes of the specific processes. We wanna, we wanna identify the thieves of the energy stealers in our body. And there is the graph again, where we, we peak here, we come down here, but it's this 20 to 60 year old where the action is. And this is best illustrated by this. This is NAD, 20 years old, it's 50 to 60, 20 to 30, it comes down. This is happening silently all the way down until 60. And now we can come along and boost it, put it back up here, give them back their energy. This is just one of many other causes. We're just gonna to begin to find other areas within, within a person's body. Now, physiologic and pharmacologic strategies. What are the strategies you need to boost the NAD level? Fasting and a healthy diet. We already know caloric restriction prolongs life and a healthy diet, exercise, NAD precursors. And you can see right there, there's the NMN and the NR. And then we wanna block some enzymes that chew up NAD, the PARPs and CD38. But you see all the arrows going down to NAD. And on the left side, youthfulness. On the right side, age-associated functional decline. So it's not the only cause of why we age, but it's a big cause. And it's pretty simple to fix if you have the right booster and the right patient. And you'll see that clinically when you see when you begin treating people the way I have recently in the past year. This is the complicated pathway of how NAD is formed. There are three pathways: the de novo pathway, the press handler pathway, and the salvage pathway. And the key issue, we would hope that if we took nicotinic acid or niacin that it would work its way down into the body and make NAD so we didn't need to take a booster. Well, when you test people, that doesn't happen. We're gonna see a few patients it does happen, but it's a minority. So we need something else. We need another type of booster. And one of them is the NMN, and the other one is the NR. And they both work, they grow across the membranes and in a complicated way go along and make and promote the production of NAD. So these are biosynthetic pathways. They're somewhat dull and boring, but it's exciting to understand that we have the ability to come in and boost NAD instead of letting it just sit there and become lower and lower and lower. I like this slide because it kind of summarizes in a nice way what it's all about. The causes for NAD reduction during aging and the mechanisms underlying anti-aging. At the bottom of the slide, we give NMN supplementation. That increases NAD biosynthesis in two of the pathways. It, that results in increased NAD in the body and it helps reverse the aging process. What a daring thing to say. I think it reverses the process of the aging process. It stops it and allows it to not age. There are increasing, these enzymes in our body chew up NAD. Some of them, there are, we, we've also talked about sirtuin, CD38 and PARPs. But also over here, Reduction of the NAD biothesis by chronic inflammation and oxidative stress. Physicians who treat patients integratively find out many times we don't know what causes the disease. We know there's inflammation, 
We don't know whether the autoimmunity is doing it or some other process. But if we can stop the inflammation, that helps contribute. So that's why taking omega-3 fat, having less oxidative stress is important, blocking the NAD consuming enzymes. And while we do all that, it's not enough. We need to take, not all of us, but most of us would benefit by taking a booster. And the booster I recommend is NMN, and it reverses the aging process, slows it down. Nutritional elements up top. Up top, they're the, the pathways, tryptophan, niacin, NMN, and NR. These are the elements that can theoretically be transformed into NAD. Tryptophan very rarely gets there. Niacin, not directly, except in some patients. And these are the two primary ones. Now, redox reaction is the NAD going from NAD plus to NADH, and it goes back and forth, working integratively with sirtuins and PARPs to give us energy metabolism, DNA repair, gene expression. It does so many things, it's tough to believe. It's certainly tough to understand the, the minute details. But at the, the other aspect, uh, the other the bad aspect, if you don't do it, you get metabolic diseases, obesity, diabetes, dyslipidemia, and fatty liver disease. Hallmarks of NAD homeostasis. This is true. It helps all these things. Mitochondrial metabolism, redox reactions going back and forth, NAD, NAD plus, circuit circadian rhythm, inflammation. Lowering the, the inflammation in the body, DNA repair, cell division, signaling, and epigenetics. All these things by this little molecule that goes down in all of us as we age. How does it all work? This is cellular respiration. And for those physicians out there, remember this in medical school. We have three phases. We have glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and then oxidative phosphorylation. So glucose in our body is made to pyruvate glycolysis, and we gain two ATPs. We then move the pyruvate from the cytoplasm of the cell into the mitochondria, and the citric acid cycle is there, and that adds in more ATPs. And then we move the NADH, that's the reduced form of NAD, and FADH2, that's the reduced form, into the other parts of the mitochondria, the electron transport chain, and that produces a lot of ATP. This happens every day in every cell and gives us energy. When it doesn't work, when it slows down, we get tired, we age. And by boosting NAD, which is the final product, we get all kinds of energy. So let me go back here. This is glycolysis. This is the overall reaction to glycolysis. And basically, we, it costs us two ATPs, and the net result, we get four. And so we double arm NAD. And it's, it's a, there's an energy investment phase and a, uh, and a, uh, a, a, a receiving the, uh, the, and the energy harvesting phase. And basically, it's a way that we take glucose, make it down to go to pyruvate, and we get two NAD and two, NA, two, two ADPs to work as we move forward to the next cycle. And the next part is the Krebs cycle. And we remember that in medical school, it goes around like a circle and pyruvate comes along and goes into acetyl AC, acetyl coenzyme A and goes through the cycle. And as we go along, NAD becomes NADH and FAD becomes FADH2. And this is how the Krebs cycle begins making ATP along the way, two of them. And then we get to the electron transport chain. And you now you see where NAD comes in and now it's converted back to NADH and FAD and then moves down this pathway so that we can make huge amounts of ATP for our bodies. And there's the summary. In aerobic and anaerobic uh, uh, respiration, we get two ATPs. Then we move it to pyruvate. It goes into the mitochondria and it goes into acetyl coenzyme A from the Krebs cycle. And then that goes over to oxidative phosphorylation and we get 32 ATPs. And this happens all the time. And NAD has to be there at the right time, the right amount to be able to cause it to happen. And when it doesn't happen, we age. Now, intracellular NAD testing. It's a unique opportunity to test and understand individual 
patient treatment results at baseline and after NAD supplementation. I think it's essential to optimize AT, uh, NAD. So I, we define the optimum range, we identify patients who are deficient in NAD, we give them the NAD, evaluate the efficacy and adjust the dose. Some patients need a little more than two scoops a day of the powder. They need one and a half or one and a quarter scoops. Some people in their 30s and 40s are low. They don't need two scoops. Everybody's different. Shock of all shocks. We're all a little different, but most of us need NAD as we get older. And the assay that's, that's used is specialized and it's, it's, it's very reproducible, very def defensible, and it's the only one available. Now, this is one how it has been reported out. Now, if you look down here, you look at the colors. Someone who has a zero to 20 micromole level of NAD plus is severely deficient. Someone who's between 20 and 30 is moderately deficient. Someone who's between 30 and 40, yellow, suboptimal. Optimal is between 40 and 100, and it can be too high. You don't want to be over 100. Certainly not real or very high. So that's the normal. This is the result. This is my result back last March. And I'll show you my result. There I was in March. A month later, after taking NAD, I'm in the green. To test it again, I'm in the green. To test it again, I'm in the green. I'm always in the green. I take two puffs, two uh, scoops a day. Has it helped my energy? Yeah, we won't get into me, but we'll go into some of my patients I'll talk about. But it is truly one example. And so I'm gonna go through a few more just to see the flavor of this. This young lady is 45 years old, 19 point, she is severely deficient. I can tell you that she um, got a, uh, a booster that gave her myocarditis. And she was really, really deficient. She's still sick. But she's better. And so let me show you what happened to her when she went on NAD. She bumped up to 50.5. It helped her 20, 30%. Didn't cure her. She's still struggling. So it's one piece of it. It doesn't cure everything. But it's one element of her dysfunction where her cells were not able to produce NAD+. Here's a patient of mine um, who... I gave the powder to her and she wasn't getting better and I repeated it and she just wasn't taking it, wasn't taking it right. You have to squish it in your mouth. When she finally went this way, 44.7, she got better. So I could tell that this wasn't working. So we tested and sure enough, she wasn't level. When you reach the level, patients get better. They don't get 90% better, get 20% better, 50% better, they get better. And then our job, my job, is to find out why they got better and why, how can we get them completely better. Now, uh, this patient over here is, is a separate patient. His level is 108.5. He's blue. As a cardiologist, last summer, I gave this gentleman, because he had a problem with his HDL molecule, I gave him niacin. Uh, at, you know, niacin and I gave him niacin, and he took 500 milligrams at night with flush. And then when I tested him, just about two months ago to see where he was. He was surprisingly at 108.5. He's one of the few people that do not need a booster. Niacin, and with him, when he takes niacin, it does actually go through the pathway and build NAD. So, so, so that's another reason why to check who does it. In my experience, and it's in about a year, it's rare. I have three patients that's happened to. The second patient is here. I tested some baseline, and his value is 168.2. I said, what are you doing? I'm taking niacin and quercetin. So he's taking niacin that boosted it, and then he took quercetin that chews up the NAD, so he's really hot, and that's not good. So we want to maybe change that. Now, this is a summary of some of my patients, and I'm just going to go through as a clinician to get you a flavor of how I've been doing this. March 2020, this is my office manager, and she was orange at 21.2. And then a month later, she stayed up because she was she was not swishing. What, what am I swishing? So you take the powder, you put it in, you just put it in a glass and you let it dissolve a little bit. 
and then you take some of the water and you put it in your mouth and you hold it there for 60 seconds. So it's against your buccal mucosa. And then you swallow. Then you go back and take the other second and third glass of water. When she did that, she went right up to green. I actually didn't switch and I shot right up to 55. So some people don't switch. Well, now I make everybody switch. In fact, I showed them how to switch before I let them go home with the powder. And this is C, you can see I, and I got clinical improvement. This fellow, BW, he's got significant um, obesity and cardiac dysfunction. He popped right up with clinical improvement. This is the young lady who didn't, um, what didn't doing, wasn't doing well that I already showed. She was low and then she went up to 47. This one is a 79, now he's 80 years old, a gentleman. And um, he was one of my early ones and I gave it to him and he got hooked. Within July, he says, you know, when I run out, I need more of it. And by August, he wasn't without it. In fact, when he gets low on it, he says, send me another bottle because it really boosts his energy. He, he, people feel the need when they, when they take the powder and they get sleep better and they get energy. And if they run out of the product, they, uh, they, get, they want it. Now, people say, well, do I need to take it all the time? Well, I use the example of thyroid. When someone's hypothyroid and they stop taking their thyroid pill, they get tired, so they go back on it. And I think that's what it is. The body cannot make NAD as we get older. We need to boost it. We can give it, we can give quercetin, we can diet, we can exercise, but we also need to do a booster in most people. Not all, but most people. This person here, MM, is a 77-year-old gentleman on di in dialysis. Now, NAD, is big deal in the kidneys. And I was hoping that he would get some clinical improvement. When he first did, he didn't take, he didn't, I, I don't think he was a believer, but at any rate, it didn't get better. But recently, um, and he, I just did this, just, I just got the result back the two weeks ago. He finally took it the way I want, it, it, for, it's swishing it, and he got up to green, 61.2, and he's feeling better. He's on chronic dialysis, not 100%, but clearly better. So again, it proves the point that um, giving a boost to someone chronically ill, you're not gonna maybe cure them, but you're gonna help them restore a needed option that is gone as we get older. This is the lady who had the, uh, the, the Pfizer uh, vaccine. And when we were talking to her, uh, this, this, young, well, this woman went to yellow at baseline, was yellow at baseline, and I put her on the Vitality Booster and she get mild improvement. I haven't got a follow-up visit. This young man, very interesting. He's 38 years old with a yellow at 30.3. He was a soldier in Afghanistan exposed to ongoing uh, co complications. He has gonochomastia, he has low testosterone, he's chronically tired. When he went on the booster, he shot right up to 63.8. He improved mild to moderate. He didn't become 100% better, but he got so much, of, so much of his life back by taking a booster from all the toxins that he, ex he was exposed to. And now I have him going through a sauna to try to sweat out some of these toxins. But again, 38 years old, a low NAD, improving with a booster. Next group here, June 2022, MK. Oh, this is a lovely lady. Who has severe rheumatoid arthritis, uh, and she's got uh, oh, just and she's an insulin-dependent diabetic. Uh, she's got hypertension, and she was red. And I put her on the booster, and she has uh, actually she hasn't had a repeat test because I just put it on. No, I didn't. I gave it to her, and she, and she hasn't repeat test, but she's so much better. RS. Oh, this is a, a retired chiro female chiropractor who developed long COVID and she had to quit working. And her, her level was orange at 26.7 in June. By August, it went to green. Clear clinical improvement. The long COVID went away. So you wonder, there are many causes of long COVID. But if COVID tips you off into uh, NAD deficiency, you should boost it and probably there are many patients who have long COVID who had marginal NAD levels and then COVID puts them back. And then there's some data, if you Google it, uh, NAD 
and uh, COVID. Uh, here's a patient of mine, actually a close friend, uh, GE65, he was very red. He has active prostate cancer. I didn't give him a booster. I wouldn't give him a booster because it could possibly add to the fueling of it. Um, this is a young man with uh, Parkinson's disease. Very red, very low. And I just recently put him on it. I, don't, I can't tell you the response. But again, how does Parkinson's disease, which is a chronic inflammatory process, it comes to the GI tract, goes into the substantia nigra, and it and, and, and makes a patient develop the uh, tremors that eventually you put them on L-DOPA, and then they get tremors from L-DOPA. It's a terrible disease, and yet he's on this, and hopefully this is going to somehow help his energy uh, and maybe his Parkinson's. We don't know. Let's see, this one is, uh, I forget who that is. Oh, this one, let me tell you, PA, he has um, severe lymphedema, a blood pressure of 120, he's got diastolic dysfunction, chronic congestive heart failure, and I haven't got a, and he's kind of homebound, I, I see him at his home, so I haven't had a chance to get a follow-up. But since he's been on the booster, he walks down the hall, he's less short of breath. And again, you know, Cardiologists today, we see people with congestive heart failure, they have diastolic dysfunction and they have in in intact ejection fractions, but they have stiff ventricles. And it's more common than the other forms of congestive heart failure. And clearly, I believe NAD boosting in people who are low help the diastolic dysfunction. And I'm going to see that in a few other patients. Um, MD, 75 year old female. Who that? I'm not sure who that is. I'm sorry. Who the, that one represents. Let me drop down to uh, RM. Oh yeah, this is the fellow. Yeah, this is the fellow that didn't need uh, a booster. 58 year old white male with marked improvement eyes to die. I gave him endurance. One of three patients. So it's amazing. Uh, and, and of course, I was trying to help his HDL. I helped his HDL and his energy too, but uh, by giving him niacin. Um, this person is a 64 year old white male uh, professor. And he's tired all the time, and he's he's got he got some form of narcolepsy, and so I gave him uh, the booster, and he went from 22 to 53. He's still a little narcoleptic, but he's much guys much more energy, and, and it's a real uh, it's such a delight to see that happen. Um, this is an overworked lady with two grandchildren, and she was yellow, and she went up, and she was getting tired. And she went up when I gave her the uh, booster. And she only she went up a lot, but she really was able to take care of her grandchildren more efficiently and with much more joy. It's kind of funny. All right, in July. Yeah, this is my, my almost my last slide, but I wanted to go over a few. Um, this is the person who came with the very high NAD, 168.2. He was on niacin and quercetin. And, this, and he wasn't feeling well. He does not feel well at this level. And again, I, don't, I haven't had many people in the blue to understand what symptoms they have when you get too much, but he was tired and irritable and it wasn't weight, he wasn't overweight. And so I stopped um, his uh, quercetin and he dropped down to 154. So then I dropped his, uh, and his, his niacin and he went down too low. He got in the 35. I just saw him in the office actually two days ago. And he's back up to a thousand of, uh, I, I took the niacin away. I put him back up to a, a niacin, a thousand. Uh, and he's, I think he's going to be fine. But again, uh, it tells you that you need to test uh, people to understand their uniqueness. Uh, this is my uh, long-term transcriptionist. And she's 88 years old and she looks like she's 75. But she was getting tired and she was red, 13.8. And she got so much better. It's so nice when you see someone you've known for like 40 years get so much better by giving her a booster. It's just unbelievable. unbelievable. Um, uh, this is a 77-year-old uh, lady who went from red to, uh, to, uh, to yellow with a, a moderate clinical improvement. Um, this is a patient of mine who's 90 years old, he has cancer of the prostate and lymphoma, and he's low, but I'm not going to give him a booster. First, I, why would I give someone 90 a booster who's doing, he's relatively well, but basically um, it just illustrates the point that when you see somebody who's got cancer, especially the prostate, 
or pancreas, you do not give them an NAD boost until we know more data. The second to last patient, this is a, a gentleman that I've known for years. He's had, um, his baseline level was orange. He's had a, a aortic valve replacement, one kidney missing, and he's got coronary disease. And his ejection fraction is about 30%. And I put him on, and he's got a stiff ventricle. And I put him on the, uh, uh, the booster, and he went right up to 57.1, and he clinically improved immensely. Now, you know, we have patients with chronic congestive heart failure and preserved ejection fraction and de decreased ejection fraction, but this is the second person that had a decreased ejection fraction that went up with a booster. So we, I know these are going to be studied in the future, but it certainly is an option for a cardiologist to consider adding in, especially if they get a low NAD level, uh, powder to help improve their AD, ATP production. This was a patient today, and I, it's just amazing. And I, I have to tell you this. I saw this patient yesterday. He's, uh, he must be 73 years old. He has severe amyloid cardiomyopathy with a very low ejection fraction, 25%. Got a pacemaker in. He's on Eliquis. I tested him yesterday. He was tired. His wife came with him. He said, so tired, Dr. Lane. Is there anything you can do? So I tested him, I put, and I sent the test off. And I started him today, one scoop of vitality. And I was coming to the office today. I'm going to read to you his text he sent me. Dr. Delaney, Dave H. here. I took one dose of NAD this morning with breakfast. I cannot say for sure, but I've been doing odds and ends work here at home, some of which I would not have attempted because of lack of energy as recently as yesterday. I also drove back from Logan Airport this morning after dropping my daughter off for a trip. Have also made a stop at the grocery store. Do I have more energy already? It appears so, but maybe this is just a blip. We'll keep you posted as you have requested me to do. Thank you and enjoy your day. Well, this made me enjoy my day. You know, I noticed early on that when people have very low levels, 19, 18, they get better fast, but this is so fast, I've never seen it. One dose of a booster? I can predict when we get the result back, I bet you his, his NAD level will be like in the low, low red, you know, like two. But anyway, it's fascinating. Now, does that mean truly, that maybe this is excitement, but this guy is not, he doesn't say things unless he really means it. So it's kind of exciting for me to see that. And I had to share that with you because it's like, just happened. Okay, let me finish up by just summarizing a few things. Here as we are, we have a healthy adult all of us listening, hopefully. We have some AD to consumption and we have some AD biosynthesis. Then we age, we all age. And I just told you that all of us have less NAD biosynthesis, probably because of increased NAD consumption. When we give a booster, we enhance NAD. We block and inhibit the parts and we decrease the amount of NAD consumption, but that's not enough. We need to supplement with an NAD booster. And that's kind of simple, but that's what it is. Healthy, aging, something wrong with NAD, fix it if you're safe and move on. NAD decline at the core of hallmarks of aging. In all these episodes, this is the, the, the core elements of aging are in these, circular list, top, DNA damage, telomere attrition, epigenetic alterations, mitochondrial dysfunction, big time, autophagy. We, we need to, when the cells die, we need to eat them up and go away and get out of our body. I forget what you put this, I mean, let me move this thing over a little bit. Yeah, that's stem cell exhaustion. In fact, you know, I know some patients who go to Columbia, in Puerto Vallarta and in Panama to get stem cells from, from uh, embogo cords. And I now learned that they should get NAD before they get the stem cells because the NAD, once you boost the MAD, the stem cells they get will last longer. Cellular senescence, our cells age too quickly. Altered cellular communication, the lack of healthy proteins and this nutrient sensing. So all these things. And I look at this and I say, here's a baby and a child 
and an adult, we don't want to become a bent over 80, 75, 80, 85. If we can boost the NAD, correct that deficiency, and then work on other things within that 20 to 60 age cause, where you had inflammatory disease, a leaky gut, whatever, I think we can really stop the aging process or slow it down. So NAD boosters, anti-aging, anti-inflammation, genomic stability, neuroprotection, hematopoiesis, energy metabolism, mitochondrial function. Are we overstating it? I don't think so. Muscle, uh, uh, bones, muscle, renal, cancer. All these things will be helped if we can put more NAD into our body and stop the decline. And so what are the effects? Well, from today's patient, <laughs> David H, cardio protection. And as a cardiologist, I see that. Nervous system, liver, vasculature, lymphoid tissue, reproductive organs, kidney, pancreas, muscle, adipose tissue. And so we have NAD, we have diet, exercise, and NAD boosters. That's the solution. And so again, I want to end with this slide. We have an NMN, NAD booster, that causes a life health span extension because we approach and we fix things between 20 and 60. And if we can do that, instead of going down, we go up. And I think the future is going to hold to find out what other causes of instability. What other things can we do? Increased intestinal permeability, you know, leaky gut, uh, you know, all sort of colitis, autoimmune diseases. If we can fix it, we can keep the body from using its energy to try to keep up with the, keep the diseases at bay and use it so that when we really get older, we can live in a healthy way into our 80s and even higher, standing upright. So thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, Dr. Delaney, thank you so much. That was a terrific presentation. We do have about a half a dozen questions. Um, I'm just going to open this up for, uh, for the sake of time and whether that would be answered by you or Dr. Shi or Dr. Sedano, um, feel free to chime in uh, with these questions. Uh, first question I'm going to ask, uh, what is more important, circulating NAD or intracellular NAD levels? And should these go hand in hand? Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure the answer, but I believe that the intracellular NAD is a much more accurate level to tell whether or not the, whether you whether you have whether you're low in NAD and you've repleted it. So I don't think the NAD level in the blood is something we can measure equal adequately. So I think no, I think you need an intracellular NAD. It's not. And I don't think the NAD level in the blood would be effective. But I would ask Dr. Shea to answer that question possibly too. Sure. Um, well, we can measure both intracellular and the circulating NAD. And um, these two forms of NAD have very different functions. For most anti-aging uh, energy and performance purposes, intracellular NAD is much more important than circulating NAD. Great, thank you. Uh, next question, is there any evidence of increasing NAD by decreasing NADH with high consumption of primary antioxidants? Read the question again, please. Is there any evidence of increasing NAD by decreasing NADH with high consumption of primary antioxidants? Well, the question implies that if we can just keep that NAD level up all the time by giving antioxidants that kind of negate the NADH. But what I see when I read the literature and I see patients that the body's going back and forth, NAD, NADH, along with sirtuins and uh, PARPs. And I suspect that um, that the answer, it's unanswerable, but I suspect that that's not the way it works. That it's, it's, it's by giving one thing, antioxidants, to make you form NAD all the time. I think we need to go back and forth. In fact, uh, 
the sirtuins work by actually taking NAD and making it into NADH in a beneficial way. So I don't want to interfere with normal physiology by excessing, by giving antioxidants. So I would say no. Thank you. Uh, next question. What could happen if you take this product without screening for cancers first? Well, we don't know that. So we're, we're, in, the, we're in the beginning phase of, of safety of anything we give patients. So I'm probably just very picky, very careful. So I think many people could, can take it. And, and again, the, the, the question is this. We know that, I don't show some of the slides, but when glycolysis goes down to uh, pyruvic acid, it can go left. And we know that the body, what, people with cancer, they steal energy from glycolysis. So since there's a steal can go on, just theoretically, I want to make sure that I'm not boosting energy that's going to be used by the cancer. So, uh, you know, we don't, we, so I, for that reason, I believe in my simplistic way that we check for cancer clinically by the markers and, and not scare patients. You know, I, pe I see people with elevated CEAs and there's no evidence of cancer. But I don't, I think I have an obligation until I have more experience to be very careful and not to scare people. I mean, I would have members of my family take it, I, I, but I would use these guidelines. And I'm looking for the, for the literature and other physicians to do what I do to, to answer those questions. But I would always be careful. Thank you. Um, what about clients that are cancer survivors? Is it okay to use the booster? Ah, uh, good question. It depends upon the tumor. I would have to, I would ask the oncologist, the integrative on oncologist, is, would, is this type of cancer likely to steal energy? Now we know cancer of the prostate does it and cancer of the uh, pancreas does it, but a lot of other cancers don't. So I don't know the answer to that question. And I would use the same criteria I use now. I would think about it, read about it, and ask someone smarter than me to try to figure it out and be careful. <laughs> Um, how do your results with Vitality Booster compare with injectable NAD? Okay, so uh, I don't know that because we're not comparing it, but I know that in here in Boston, there are clinics that give IV NAD to help uh, against addiction and to think that they're giving NAD like boosters. When you give IV NAD, it's very dangerous. You gotta be very careful about the toxin, about the doses and give it very slowly. And it's very expensive. And it doesn't show that you increase the intracellular NAD levels, which gets to your earlier question about giving a blood level of NAD versus an intracellular level. So I, I, I my, my studies, of course, I, I don't, I, I am a clinical physi physician. My use of NAD boosters has, is not in any way comparing it with the IV NAD. I wouldn't have my patients pay fifteen, two thousand dollars for an IV NAD infusion especially since it's been shown not to get an intracellular NAD. So I, I wouldn't even do the study, but I don't know the answer to that. I, I can add some more information here. So as Dr. Dinady indicated, uh, intravenous infusion of NAD does not increase NAD level inside of the cell at all. The IAM intramuscular or sub-Q injection of NAD can Boost the NAD level inside of the cells a little bit, but don't optimize the NAD level to where we want, uh, want them to be. The best way to uh, in increase intracellular NAD are the precursors. Uh, in the, uh, uh, the oral form of the precursors are the easiest one and cheapest way to boost the NAD level. Thank you. All right. Um, just going to read through a few more. Some of these we may just have to um, uh, uh, answer uh, first thing in the morning tomorrow. Um, anything as far as like what studies set the high level of NAD to at 100? Uh, I think the experience of Dr. Shea. But again, we, 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 I, we, we have more questions about why the blue range, like the fellow that had 104, I left him alone. But the fellow were 160 and wasn't feeling well, I want to drop him into the green. And again, we don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that. I agree with Dr. Dinady. Um, we don't really know 
how high the level for NAD uh, would be harmful at this moment. But to be abundantly cautious, we try not to put the level over 100. And that does not really mean that a little over 100 will cause harm. So we uh, have more data coming out. We will probably be able to answer this question much better in the future. I think the principle is that we do no harm. We know that it's not healthy, but we, quite, we, quite, we don't know which specific what, reasons why and what it's not healthy in and and is it healthy in everybody so we don't know all those questions so a year from now we will know i hope great uh just a few more uh, do you screen for cancer markers before deciding whether to give the booster and also just a question on that note which diagnostic test do you use yeah i well i screen for those biomarkers that i mentioned you know there's there's you know cancer of the prostate, ovary, pancreas, and, and uh, uh, prostate. Um, and, and, I, and I do that, I, before I let anybody get it, I make sure that those markers are normal. And then I check a history and I make sure there's no evidence of cancer in them. And so those are the, that's what I do. Now, uh, there are some tests I use now uh, uh, that was, where you can, and they just came out of the United Kingdom, where you can, it costs $980, but you can find out if you have 50 early cancers in your body. And so, and they, they do this test to find out if you're, you're hiding 50 different cancers and that would be even better, but that's another test, an expensive test. So in the future, I think there are gonna be tests available to find out whether you have early cancers. This, this came that 77% of patients in the United Kingdom when they were diagnosed with cancer, it was too late. And so they went ahead and did this study using uh, one of this company, I won't mention the name now because I think there are a couple out there, and they found that they could effectively lower their risk of, of uh, lower the age, lower their risk of death from cancer of, of, of cancer by finding it earlier. And that's, that's the goal. But right now, my way of finding it earlier is to do the biomarkers, do the screenings, and examine the patient and make sure that the best of my knowledge, there's no cancer. Excellent. Um, all right, I'm gonna, uh, Dr. Delaney, I'm just gonna ask you to forward a few slides. The, the, the rest of this is just a few practitioners that are asking how to place orders and how to learn in, any information uh, right on their Avexia account. So if you can just go to the next slide. Um, now that we've learned about NAD and NAD optimization, I would like to review how to order the testing and Akiri supplements before concluding the webinar. Um, we also do just have a slide on here, just a reminder, uh, ask the doctor, uh, Dr. Wayne Sedano is on with us as well. Um, our practitioners do have access on their Avexia account on the left-hand side. We offer two services here. We have a free Ask the Doctor email consultation where you can ask Dr. Sedano to review any results that are back on your Avexia portal when those come back, or just general questions on what type of test to do, uh, questions on clinical conditions and that, uh, the such of that. Uh, there's also uh, where you can sign up for a live consultation. It'll take you right to a Zoom meeting. And then again, from that, you'll have a Zoom recording link and all of the additional notes. So this is a wonderful service for our Avexia practitioners. Um, next slide. So how to order, um, how to order the tester bundle. So when you're on your Vexia account on the left-hand side, you're just gonna go to lab orders. You'll enter your patient into your directory or you'll be able to order right there, add new lab order. Then really just step three, you're gonna click a box that's called specialty labs. And from there, you're going to see a drop-down box, add Genfinity Precision Medicine products to order. And then from there, you're going to be able to lo locate the desired test. You'll be able to add it to the shopping cart. It's on the left-hand side. It's a blue plus symbol. And then just preview your order, review the details, and place the order. Uh, next slide. I do that right? Let's see. 
Yeah, I think I might have been missing one. It was just really right. showing uh, it, it, it to be able to order um, the Akiri um, supplements um, right from the right from your Vexia account. There is a tab across the top that is the Avexia store. And then when you click on that, you're going to find the Genfinity supplements. And then from there, you're able to see the pricing of the products and you're able to add that to your shopping cart and then be able to go ahead and check out. It's really just that simple. And uh, really for any questions or issues, comments, please contact Avexia Diagnostics. We are here 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Our phone number is displayed here, uh, as well as a general email address, info at avexiadiagnostics.com, that'll be answered. Uh, also feel free to use the um, e uh, live chat right on your Avexia account. Um, and uh, we will be able to, um, our client su success team, Team, uh, will be able to answer any questions. Um, a recording of this webinar will be available by email in the next few days. I know there are some questions in here that we didn't get through. Some of them are pretty technical, so we will definitely get um, your questions answered in the, few, in, in the next couple days. Um, thank you, Dr. Delaney, Dr. Shi, Dr. Sedano. Uh, for this informative presentation and being on uh, being here. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us for the webinar event. Until next time, from everyone at Avexia Diagnostics and Genfinity, stay healthy, stay safe, and we wish you all the best on your pathway to wellness. Good night, everyone.